Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Hmm. I'm going to end off of this one. Listen, still dealing with saints being so highly intimidated by the works of the enemy. When God says fear not, he ain't playing. So I ask you, what are you afraid of? All right. We're going to read Exodus chapter 14, starting at verse 10, taking all the way to the end. And you guys are going to see how God deals with our enemies. And watch how the people responded, because you're going to see, some of you will see yourselves in these pictures here. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Now, the Israelites were let go by Pharaoh after God had let go, you know, had let loose that that uh, disease. Now, here the people are out in the wilderness. Now, behind them is Egypt. In front of them is the ocean. So there is nowhere else to run, nowhere else to hide. But God hardens Pharaoh's heart and sends his army, him and his army. They take off, he gets his chief soldiers, and they take off and said, no, forget this. We're going to get them Israelites and make them come back. So the Israelites are scared now because they see the dust coming up in the air. Oh, Lord, here come the, the uh, Egyptians. And they start hollering at, at Moses, what you do, bring us out here to die? You know, it would be better if we just go on back with them. At least we'll be alive. Don't some of you say that? All right, listen to this. Mm. Verse 10. No, let me go back. Let, let, wait, wait, wait. That's why some of you go back to your abusive husbands that kick your tail and knock you down the stairs and bust your ribs. You feel like at least you can eat. At least you have a roof over your head. At least you are alive. That's what you call alive. You go right on ahead, baby cakes. Now listen to this. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, that means near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord and they said unto Moses because there was because there were no graves in Egypt hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt it is not is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Pat's two cents. I'd rather die free than live bound. Hello. Verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Hmm. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Pat's two cents. Y'all need to keep stepping. I don't care what Satan is whispering in your ear. I don't care what Satan is doing to you. Keep on keeping on. You keep forward. You keep the faith. You keep putting one foot in front of the other. I don't care how much you feel like you're failing. I don't care how weak you feel. You keep moving forward. Stay on your feet. Don't you crumble. Don't you bow. 
God said move forward, that's what you do. Verse 16, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Let me stop there real quick. Pat's two cents. That means they were within visual. They were within eye contact. Hello. That's too close for comfort for some of y'all. Listen. <clears throat> and it was a cloud. And darkness to them. Which means to the enemy. But it gave light by night to these. God's people so that the one came not near to the other all night. Can't touch, Pat's two cents. Can't touch this baby. God's got us covered. Verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Pat's two cents. When God allows the enemy to pursue and pursue and pursue, you sit down, cross your hands, and relax, baby. Guess why? Because they ain't going to be able to get to you. God's got something for them. Listen, verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariots. Woo. <laughs> Let me read that again. And took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came unto the sea after them. There remained not so, not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and the Egyptians saw the Egyptian, excuse me, and the Israel and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the Lord, the people feared the Lord and believed 
the Lord. Pats to says, finally they believed. And his servant Moses. Now listen, y'all can sit there and believe the devil all you want. The devil ain't nothing but lies. He is the author of confusion. He is a lie. Now, whatever God says, God will carry out. God is not a man that he should lie. So believe him when he says, I got this baby, fear not. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to save your behind. I'm going to rescue you out of the grip of the enemy. But stick with me, kid. You can't go and, and do what Satan tells you to do. You got to do what I tell you to do if you really want the victory. Now, Moses could have looked at God and said, now, Lord, this don't make no sense. They right there. Now, what me sticking my, my rod over the ocean, what's that going to do? What's the wind going to do? That's a whole ocean out there. Is an ocean stronger than God? If God can overpower the ocean, how much more, little devil? Come on now. What do you believe? Are you going to believe the enemy's lies or are you going to believe the report of the Lord? Whose report shall you believe? I believe in the Lord and that's who I stand on. 